This is the video where you learn everything that you need to know about your DJI Osmo Action 4. The Osmo Action 4 works pretty similarly to the previous version, but there are a few significant changes. There's a bigger sensor with bigger pixels, and there's also less of them. Bigger pixels are better at capturing light, which gives the Osmo Action 4 sensor a higher dynamic range. The Osmo Action 4 can capture some pretty spectacular shots, and it's very user-friendly. I'll talk about the different modes and settings, when to use them, and how to get the most from them. I'll talk about the DJI Mimo app, and how it works with the Osmo Action 4. I have the Adventure Combo, which means I have three extreme batteries, which can last up to 160 minutes, if you're shooting at 1080p. Most likely, you're going to be shooting at 4K though, so you're not going to get 160 minutes. We have the battery case, which you can use to charge all three batteries simultaneously. And also, it can double up as a power bank. As well, the Adventure Combo comes with the cage, which allows you to mount the camera from the side. There are two adapter mounts with two locking screws, but it's not so that you have a spare. They're actually slightly different. One is an adapter and the other is an adapter mini. The mini version has smaller mounting prongs and that gives you different options depending on what you're mounting your camera to. They both use the magnetic quick release system, which makes getting the camera on and off very easy. There's also this curved adhesive base mount, which fits securely to most bike helmets. There's also a lens hood, which you can use instead of the camera cover. But bear in mind, the camera won't be waterproof when you're using the hood. And there's also a USB-C to USB-C cable. Finally, we have the extendable handle, which can be quickly extended up to one and a half meters. And I have to say that I use this all the time because it turns your Osmo Action 4 into something similar to a phone and a gimbal, except it's actually easier to use. But I'll talk more about that later. Now, if you just bought one and you're getting started for the first time, the next section is for you. If you've already set up your Osmo Action and you've had some experience using it, you can skip to the following part. The Osmo Action 4 uses a micro SD card. The one I'm using is a 128GB SanDisk Extreme Pro. DJI says you need a UHSI Speedgrade 3 micro SD card to be able to read and write high resolution video. The micro SD card goes inside the battery compartment and you can open that by pushing upwards in the direction of this arrow. So that's towards the top of the camera. Slot in your micro SD card, press it down so that it clicks into place and then place the battery inside and then you just batten down the hatches. Now, if you see any orange, that means your camera isn't sealed properly and therefore it's not waterproof. So make sure the hatches are closed correctly if you're taking the camera underwater. To charge the battery while it's still in the camera, you just open the USB-C hatch. Same as the battery hatch door, press in the direction of the arrow. And this is also where you're going to plug in an external microphone. One nice touch is that the battery case also has places to store three micro SD cards. And once you've taken everything out of the box and all the protective coverings off, where should you store this camera? The DJI Osmo Action 4 does not come with a case, but I have seen a few pretty cool looking cases on AliExpress for not too much money. So that might be worth investing in. If you don't have the DJI Mimo app, you're gonna need to download it to be able to activate your camera. Now, if you're using an Android device, you will need to download the Mimo app from the DJI website as it's no longer in the Play Store. The app also allows you to control your Osmo Action 4 remotely, as well as providing other features such as editing, changing settings, live stream, switch modes, and so on. Open the app and connect to the camera. Activate the camera and install any firmware updates if you're prompted to do so. The DJI Osmo Action 4 has a quick record function. This means that you can quickly start recording when the camera is actually switched off and simply by pressing the record button. The camera switches on, starts recording, and then when you stop recording, it will switch itself off. 
and the camera actually gives you three seconds to stop it from switching off. So if you want to keep shooting, you don't have to wait for it to switch off and then power on again, like you do with the GoPro Hero 11. The DJI Osmo Action 4 has a magnetic mounting system which makes it easy to remove your selfie stick and then place it on a chest strap or helmet mount, for example. As well, the magnet can be used to stick the camera to a metal object, like a lamppost, and this is pretty great for improvising shots on the fly. The magnetic system on the Osmo Action 4 also uses a catch, so it's very secure. Just press in at the sides to release the catch. And when you have the camera in the protective frame, you now have the option to side mount the camera. And now you can film using a vertical framing. Or maybe you can use this to mount the camera to your bike or car from the side. And basically, this system gives you a lot of extra versatility when it comes to mounting and positioning your action camera. Let's power it on and try recording some video. Power on, just long press the power button on the side of the camera. So this is also the quick select button, but I'll talk more about that later. Note that when you power on, you get a rising melody and a falling melody when you power off. Now it's good to remember if you're using your camera in a situation where you might not be able to see it. For example, if you're wearing it while biking, you can power on and keep riding. Just press the record button on the top of the camera and now you get a ping sound as it starts recording. Press the record button again to stop recording and you get another falling melody. Again, useful to remember for situations where you can't see the camera. You know, one of the most common mistakes made when recording video is thinking that you're recording when you've just turned off the camera. And then you get clips of all the bits in between. <laughs> We've all done it. So now that we've recorded some video, how do we access it so we can use it? Connect your Osmo Action 4 to the DJI Mimo app. Tap the playback icon to preview photos and videos. And then just click the download button to download photos and videos to your phone. And then you can edit videos and photos directly in the Mimo app, or you can share them to social media platforms. To transfer files to a computer, power on Osmo Action 4 and connect it to a computer using a USB cable. A pop-up appears on the camera touchscreen, prompting you to select the USB connection type. Tap Transfer File to download the files from the camera to the computer. When you're transferring a file, the camera cannot take photos or record videos. And there's a second way to transfer files to a computer, which is just to remove the micro SD card from the camera, place it in a micro SD card reader, and then connect the reader to your computer. The DJI Osmo Action 4 has two screens. There's a small one on the front and a bigger one on the back, and both screens are touch screens. So the front screen is about half the size of the back screen, and therefore it is a little bit fiddly to use. But if you're in a situation where the camera is mounted and you can't reach the back screen, then you've got this extra screen that you can use instead. Let's now look at basic navigation of the touch screen. Top left is the remaining micro SD card memory in hours, minutes and seconds. This will change depending on the video setting. If you switch to a higher quality setting, the amount of available memory will decrease. Top right is the battery level. Tap it to see the level as a percentage. Middle left is the gallery button. Tap to open the gallery and preview your saved photos and videos. To delete one or more files, tap the thumbnail view button. Tap the select button. Select the files that you want to delete. Tap the three dots and then finally tap the trash can. Middle right is a settings button, tap to access those settings and also to switch into pro mode. Bottom left is the mode button, tap to switch modes and then swipe up to return to the main screen. You can also access this menu by simply swiping in the middle of the screen. Bottom right is the zoom setting, press and hold here to bring up the zoom wheel, swipe to zoom in and out. Tap the resolution and frame rate settings to access that menu. You can also swipe up from the bottom of the screen. Swipe down from the top of the screen to access a general menu. The power button doubles up as a mode switch. 
After powering up, short press to bring up mode options. Short press again to switch. Then either tap the screen or simply wait and it will select the mode that you've chosen. By default, you can see we just have these two options, photo and video. But if we tap the three dots here, we can add more modes and options. Another way to reach this page is by swiping down and tapping the quick switch button. The first option on this page is to toggle on and off the voice. If you don't want the voice every time you switch modes, just toggle this off. Below that is an option to add a screen switching mode to the quick switch menu. With this enabled, the first press of the quick switch button will switch screens between back and front and then it will lock the non-selected screen. Scroll down and then add as many functions as you want to be able to access via the quick switch. Well, why not just add them all, you might say? Well, the thing is that you have to cycle through them to reach the one that you want. So you're probably better off just adding the ones that you're gonna use the most. To change stabilization mode, tap the resolution and frame rate setting, or you can swipe up from the bottom of the screen. In the top right corner, you have the current stabilization setting. Tap that and swipe along the bottom of the screen to choose your preferred mode of stabilization. The first option is off. Notice that the camera zooms out a little bit when you turn off stabilization. And that's because digital stabilization requires cropping of the image to stabilize it. And the more powerful the stabilization, the more it's gonna crop in. So regular stabilization is called rock steady. If you want even smoother footage, choose the Rocksteady Plus. But now, like I say, it's going to crop in further. Next is horizon balancing. In this mode, the camera attempts to keep the horizon level when you turn the camera on the roll axis. And it will do this up to a 45 degree angle, and then it's going to switch to a new framing. But if you lower the resolution to 2.7K, you will now get a full 360 degree roll and the horizon is going to stay level. So to get back to the main screen, tap the little arrow or swipe down from the top. If you want standard good quality video, just switch to 4K, 16 by 9 and 30 frames per second. But the Osmo Action 4 also has the option to shoot in a 4x3 frame ratio. This is actually going to use more of the sensor and it's also going to give you more options when editing. For example, you can adjust the framing or you can crop the image to a square ratio for social media. If you want to record a lot of footage and at the same time save battery life, then you can switch down to 1080p. You can choose different frame rates depending on what you want to achieve. 24 frames per second is the movie frame rate, for example. But obviously you will need more than just a frame rate setting to make your video look like a Hollywood blockbuster. At the bottom here, I get this message recommending that I shoot at 25 frames per second. So I'm guessing that's because I'm in Europe. But personally, I almost never shoot video at 25 or 50 frames per second. Well, why is that? 24, 30, 48, 60, 120 and 24 frames per second all fit nicely together when editing. And 25, 50 and 100 also fit together when editing. But if you try and mix up the two groups, then you might have some problems. This is pretty much key filmmaking knowledge. And I go into all this stuff in my video lessons for members on Patreon. The 25, 50 and 100 frames per second settings are what's known as PAL. And they're used in Europe and other countries with a 50 Hz electricity supply. However, even though I live in Europe, I still use the 24, 30, 60, 120 and so on. I just find it more convenient. The only reason to use 25 frames per second is if you have an issue with artificial light flickering. Thing is, how often are you going to be shooting with artificial light? Because this is an action camera. I think most people will be using it during daylight hours. If you shoot at 60 frames per second, you can slow the video down when editing to 30 or 24 frames per second. And that's going to create slow motion. 120 and 240 frames per second is obviously gonna create slower slow motion. So it really depends on how dramatic you want the slow-mo to be. Bear in mind, to get 24 frames per second, you will need to shoot at 1080p. To get 120 frames per second, you're gonna need to shoot at 4K, 16 by nine or less. At 4K, four by three ratio, the maximum frame rate is 60 frames per second. Swipe down on the screen, tap the bolt button 
and scroll down until you reach a setting called video compression. If you select HEVC here, you're gonna get 10-bit color video regardless of any other settings. However, if you are uploading videos directly to social media without compressing them, then you might be better off using H.264 because it's just more compatible with a variety of platforms. As well, 10-bit video is gonna take up more memory space. If you want smaller video files and you don't need 10-bit color, then just switch to H.264. The main purpose of using 10-bit color is that it has far more color information, which is great for color grading. But in general, video is not streamed in 10-bit color, which is why you only really need 10-bit video for color work, because it's gonna get compressed down to 8-bit anyway. What's the difference between 10-bit and 8-bit color? It might not sound much of a difference. It's only two bits, right? But actually, these two bits make a huge difference to the amount of image information captured by the camera. But just remember, this is 10-bit 420. And if you're not sure what 420 means, you can look it up or you can join my Patreon where I explain all this technical stuff. Whereas the Osmo Action 3 has the d like flat color, the Osmo Action 4 now has the D-Log M flat color profile. If you use DJI drones, you might already be aware of the D-Log M color profile. Having a flat color profile theoretically gives you a better color grading experience. The image looks desaturated and it contains low contrast. When you come to color grading, you'll therefore want to add contrast and saturation. To switch to D-Log M, tap the settings icon at the side of the screen and then enable Pro Mode, where it says Color Normal, tap to switch to D-Log M 10-bit. But like I say, when you have HEV selected, everything is gonna come out at 10-bit anyway, at least according to Adobe Premiere Pro. We have three more settings here which affect the quality of the video. There's two more settings accessed by tapping here where it says Image Adjustment. Here we can adjust settings for sharpness and noise level. When you tap the setting, it's not immediately clear what it's for. We have preset and custom. But when you first use your camera, this will be set to the default sharpness and noise levels. The only other option for presets is portrait. So if you set it to portrait here, you're gonna get a medium level of sharpness and a high level of noise reduction. So I think most of the time we'll want to use custom. So switch to that. Now we get sharpness on the left and noise reduction on the right. Both have five options to choose from, from plus two to minus two. There's no right or wrong setting here, but if you find your videos are looking a bit over sharp, then you can try reducing the sharpness. If your videos are looking a little bit too noisy, try adding some more noise reduction. Personally, I prefer to have less sharpness, so I'm gonna set that to minus two, and I'm gonna leave noise reduction at naught. We, you know, we can always add extra sharpness later when we're editing. Another setting here, which is new for the Osmo Action 4, is the low light image enhancement setting. With this enabled, when low light is detected, the camera will set a higher ISO and it's also gonna use extra noise reduction. So it's gonna brighten the image and it's gonna reduce the noise at the same time. Because normally when the ISO is high in a low light setting, that does add a lot of noise. Now, however, this setting is limited to 30 frames per second or lower. Essentially, the Mimo app allows you to do most things you can do with the Osmo Action 4's touchscreens. The advantage is you can use it as a remote and you get a bigger screen. You can also use it to transfer media files from your Osmo Action 4 to your smartphone, then edit them together using the Mimo app or use another editing app. So you need to have Bluetooth and Wi-Fi enabled on your device. Open the Mimo app, and if your Osmo Action is powered on, the Mimo app should detect it and connect. In the home screen, you will see a list of all your registered DJI devices. Now be aware that when you're connected to your Osmo Action camera, you cannot connect your phone to the Wi-Fi at the same time. You might be trying to use some features, viewing videos or tutorials, and then find that it says no Wi-Fi connection. So you just need to disconnect from the camera first. There's an AI editor here, which takes some of the sweat out of editing. And I found that with these AI editors, they do a better job if you trim off the bad parts of your clips first. 
if you just import all the good bits, it actually does quite a decent job. So there's the AI editor and the template editor if you tap the button at the bottom. One thing that is new is the vivid underwater setting because being underwater adds a blue tint to your video. So this setting adjusts the color of the underwater footage and it restores these more natural colors. So if you don't want everything to look blue, then you can use this setting. And if you want to keep this uh, look, then you'll need to export it from here and then create a new file with the color changes. So that's actually a good reason to shoot 10 bit video when you're underwater. Normally we shoot 16 by 9 video with a horizontal aspect ratio. But if you want to shoot vertical video for social media, just turn the camera 90 degrees. And when you do this, you're going to see the user interface switches to vertical mode. If you don't want the orientation to switch when you rotate the camera, you can lock it. Swipe down on the screen and tap the orientation lock button to enable it. I'm going to lock it in vertical mode. And when I close the window and rotate the camera, you can see that it now stays in this vertical mode, whichever way I turn it. So setting ISO, shutter speed and white balance manually means you can lock exposure so it doesn't keep changing during the shot. This is going to make your video look a little bit more professional, but it is obviously also a bit more time consuming. Tap the settings button on the middle right. Tap the grayed out pro button so that it goes yellow. Now you have four buttons to set exposure, white balance, color profile and field of view. Tap exposure. If you leave it on auto and swipe up and down on the left of the screen, you can set an EV or exposure value. This means that the camera will set exposure automatically, but it's going to compensate up or down depending on what you set. Personally, if I think the image looks too bright in general, I can bring down the EV a few points. This is an example. Uh, when I did that, we were taking a hike through a wooded area and I found the auto exposure was really too bright. So this is actually set to minus 2.3 EV. Tap M for manual. Now you have shutter speed on the left and ISO on the right. In general filmmaking, we usually want as low an ISO as possible and a slower shutter speed. A slower shutter speed adds motion blur to your video, which is going to make it look smoother and more natural. But that said, motion blur also causes problems for your digital stabilization. So that is something to consider. If you select a slow shutter speed here, you might find you start getting ugly artifacts in the video, particularly if your video involves a lot of movement from skiing or cycling, for example. So another reason to use manual exposure is when you want to film a sunset or a sunrise, or maybe you want to film a low light or a nighttime scene. If you try this with auto exposure, to my eyes, the video comes out too bright and too noisy as well. This is an example where I was filming a sunrise with auto exposure and the camera makes it look like the middle of the day. When I switched to manual exposure, I was able to capture a much more authentic sunrise with far less noise. Again, this is a sunset scene by the sea where I used manual exposure to get the correct look. When shooting video with a regular camera, we usually want to slow down the shutter speed to get a natural looking motion blur. The problem is digital stabilization prefers a nice, clean, crisp image because it uses details in the image to make reference points so that it can first track and then fix the shaky footage. But if the reference points are blurry from motion blur, then the software is going to struggle to hang on to those points. And this is why the stabilization of these cameras struggles in low light. And as well, in low light, there is less detail in the image and more noise. DJI provides these ND filters, which just slip pretty easily over the lens protector of the Osmo Action 4, uh, thereby reducing your shutter speed. So using these, you don't need to take the lens protector off, and that means you can use ND filters underwater, and the camera is still going to be protected. But with slow shutter speed causing problems for stabilization, if you're going to add ND filters, then you might be better off switching off stabilization and then stabilizing the video with your editing software. Or you could mount the camera to a gimbal, for example. But like I say, there's now a way around this. So if we switch off the camera stabilization completely, the Osmo Action 4 now provides gyro data. The camera needs to be set to the wide angle field of view. To shoot video so that it includes gyro data, 
you need to shoot at 2.7K or 4K resolution in the 4 by 3 ratio in a frame rate of 24 frames per second up to 60 frames per second. To get the gyro data for 100 or 120 frames per second video, you're going to need to shoot 2.7K or 4K in that 16 by 9 ratio. Now, when you import your video into a program such as GyroFlow, there should be gyro data to use for stabilization purposes. And actually using GyroFlow is going to require a bit of time and knowledge to use properly and it's a little bit too complicated for me to include here. But there are tutorials out there on YouTube for you to check out. Another important setting is the field of view. Tap the settings button on the right. There are three settings to select by swiping up and down on the left of the screen. The default setting is wide. Ultra wide gives you a wider 155 degree field of view. And this has that kind of classic action camera fisheye characteristic with the bending lines. Wide as a narrow field of view with less fisheye distortion. And then finally, we have standard D warp, which is even narrower and it also removes the fisheye distortion. So this gives you something more like a smartphone camera look. Slow motion can benefit our videos in a few ways. Firstly, it adds drama and excitement to a video. This can be helpful for making a video more engaging and more visually appealing. Secondly, slow motion can also help you show your audience the action more clearly. As well, slow motion makes any camera movement appear smoother. If we swipe to the slow motion mode, at the bottom now it says 1080p and 8 times. The 8 times means the motion in the frame is obviously going to be 8 times slower. At 1080p, we have the option to create motion 8 times as well as 4 times slower. At higher resolutions, we can only create 4 times slower. The 4 times setting is obviously equivalent to the 120 frames per second setting. The 8 times setting is equivalent to 240 frames per second. Swipe along to the time lapse mode and select it. At the bottom, you can see the time lapse is going to be shot in 4K at an interval of 2 seconds per frame. And that means that a frame is captured every two seconds and then it's going to be played back at 30 frames per second. So tap the setting to open up the settings control window. There's three custom presets and a customizable option where you can set your own recording duration and interval. So the presets are crowds, clouds and sunsets. Swipe along to custom and then swipe up to set the parameters. Unless you're not going to be around to stop recording, you might as well set the duration to infinity. Then set the interval depending on how fast you want to speed up time. You can go all the way up to one frame every 40 seconds. Uh, you're only going to use that if you were filming for several hours or maybe even the whole day. The presets give you a clue here. For crowds, DJI has a frame every half a second. For clouds, it's every two seconds. For sunsets, it's every three seconds. By the way, if you have custom selected here, back in the main screen, you can now tap the settings in the top left to go directly to adjust those settings. Top right, you can change the resolution. But keep this at 4K unless you really want to save memory space. And top left is this moon symbol, which is the low power mode for time-lapse videos. When the low power mode for time-lapse is enabled, Osmo Action 4 remains in low power mode between frame capture. And this just reduces the power consumption and allows for longer recording times. For time lapses, I recommend you think about setting exposure manually using the same method that I described earlier in the video. If you don't, the exposure and color of the video might change during the shot and this can look a bit messy, especially if clouds are crossing the sun and it's changing the light conditions constantly. Once you set shutter speed, white balance and ISO manually, they will be fixed in place. For the duration of the time lapse, swipe to select hyperlapse. Hyperlapse is where you set the interval and duration like with a time lapse. But this time you're going to be moving the camera by walking or running or attaching it to a vehicle. Again, I will just keep this at 4K. Instead of settings here, you have auto or you can choose how much you want to speed up time manually. If you choose auto, the camera will speed up time depending on how long you film for. Now this is where you might want to think about using ND filters. These ones were sent to me by DJI. For more cinematic hyperlapses, it's nice to have some motion blur. And for that, 
you need a slow shutter speed. And to achieve a slow shutter speed in daylight, we're going to need ND filters. Another option is just to add motion blur afterwards using software such as CapCut. Import the clip, swipe to the motion blur effect, and then just play around with the settings until you have the amount of motion blur that feels right to you. There's a few audio settings which might be useful. Tap the settings button middle right, enable pro mode, and then tap the microphone icon. You now have two audio settings. The first one simply switches between mono and stereo audio. And the second allows you to enable or disable wind noise reduction. If it's windy or you're filming with the camera moving, then you might get some rumbles on the audio. And this feature is gonna try to reduce some of that. And this is what it sounds like with that wind noise reduction feature turned off. If you want to add an external mic, you need to connect it via the USB-C charging port. So of course it's not going to be waterproof once you do that. If you have the DJI mic, for example, the transmitter can plug directly into the camera here. So I'm using the DJI wireless mic setup, which I do find easier to use with the Osmo Action 4 than something like the Rode Wireless Go 2. Now once you have a mic plugged in, you should see this mic icon in the right corner on the main screen. And you can see that it's now picking up the sound from the DJI mic, no problem. So now I'm using the DJI mic connected directly to the Osmo Action 4. You can actually see an audio level on the front screen at the top on the little mini screen. So that helps if you're kind of using it for vlogging like I am now. You can see that you're getting a level from the microphone. One little tip actually, if you're using microphones like this, if you're not sure if it's actually going through and recording onto the camera, if you can see a level and you just tap it with your finger because it's such a soft sound only this microphone is going to pick it up just tap, tap it very gently and then you know that the camera and the microphone are connected and that you are now getting audio from the external microphone and not from the inbuilt microphone it just connects directly into the osmo action 4 you have to take the little hatch off for the USB-C uh, port. Uh, so yeah, it, it just comes off. You just pull it firmly and do the same when you put it back on again. Of course, don't forget to put it back on if you're going underwater or if you're in uh, wet conditions. So that's it for this video. If you found it useful, give it a thumbs up. And if you wanna learn more about the basics of filmmaking with mobile devices, so that's smartphones and action cameras, then you can join us on Patreon. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video that I see you in.